A man's personality and character is exuded through his haircut. Your image is important. Our high-end services range from a traditional haircut and shave to gray blending, beard shaping, and unwanted hair removal. Located at 425 Victoria Avenue East, book your appointment online now at modernmen.ca or call Tammy, 306-522-4111. Modern Men, a haircut for the modern man. Hello, I'm Sean McNall, owner of TG Marketing. We are a promotional product company located in Regina, Saskatchewan. Originally founded by Tom G. McNall in 1985, we are now in our 35th year of business. My brother Ryan and I, along with our great staff, have carried the torch since Tom retired in 2011. For those of you who don't know what we do, we sell items with a company's logo on it like clothing, pens, phone chargers, Bluetooth speakers. The list of products available is endless. Our products are a great form of advertising. Whether you want to give a gift to a valued client or show your appreciation to your staff, we have a friendly team that can help find the right product for your needs. The key to our success has been our customer service and our vast knowledge of products in our industry. We ask the right questions to get you in line with the proper product for the project you are working on. Stop by 1046 Winnipeg Street and view our showroom. Get some ideas for that next promotion you're working on. Let's make your business what everyone's talking about. He's ready. He's joining us next from Steel Town. How about that? Sidney Crosby's trade availability. Is there any chance that Sidney doesn't finish his career in Pittsburgh? Not, not a chance. Not unless he doesn't want to. Not a chance. Like, I haven't talked to Hexy about it because we would never talk about that. I haven't even said to Hexy, should we talk about moving Sid? It would be unthinkable. So, no, unless that would only change if the player changed his mind. But, no. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It is, and uh, happy Friday, everybody. Happy Flame Tech Football Friday. Hope you all are awake today. Good afternoon to the East Coasters. Good morning to the West Coasters. Thanks for uh, getting up with us and making us part of your day. It's a little thing called the RP Show, Canada's daytime sports talk show, episode number 441, emanating from the bunker out here in uh, Western Canada. Moose DuPont's with me, and I'm Rod... And I'm your host. Are you ready to talk some ball? Of course. Sure enjoyed the chat with uh, Berkey yesterday. It was great. Yes, it was. Really good. And we just switched gears on a dime over to pro football today. And that's what it's weird here with the digital shows and all the guys and gals that are getting into what we do digitally. Of course, we're on Game Plus TV. But you can kind of see who what the who's watching the most and what people want, right? And uh, for the longest time when we were doing mostly football shows, the hockey shows had the most viewers. And now the Football Friday has the most viewers after hockey shows. I haven't quite figured that out yet. There's value in what's rare, right? (laughs) Right. some value. Scarcity. Scarcity. Perceived scarcity, right? We'll talk football every day, but we're going to do it dedicated once a week so that you, you know, have that perceived scarcity. You better tune in. That's the whole idea. Yeah. And I'm just sharing on YouTube and Facebook and all the rest. So here we go. So coming up on the program today, John Frenzy. Let's be honest. I told him on the ride up here because I pick him up every Friday and drive him here. We've all just been waiting lunch for two days to get your opinion on the CFL-XFL merger. Who cares what we think? Yeah. We want to hear what the Godfather's got to say. And he's got some scoops, by the way. More scoops than Baskin-Robbins. Coming up from... (laughs) 
<laughs> almost said it with a straight face, <laughs> but couldn't. He's got 32 flavors. And then, a, and then a longtime friend of mine, Ian Furness from Sports Radio 910 KJR Seattle. He'll be joining us in our second segment here to talk some NFL, some Seattle Kraken, some Western Hockey League. He was the voice of the Thunderbirds back in the day. That's where we met. And I told that story yesterday. I like Ian. He's a good dude. And the head coach of the Toronto Argonauts, Ryan Dinwiddie, is going to be with us in an hour, too. So it's a big Flame Tech football Friday. Let's go to the quick six show topics, please, Director Jordan. Well, number one, CFL, XFL. Nothing really is new from 24 hours ago other than, and you're going to hear Lynch's scoops on that, CFL's adamant. We're not giving away anything with the CFL. We're not merging. It's going to stay a nine-team Canadian league, maybe 10. The rules aren't changing. We're just, just going to use the rock. And I don't. I think they think they actually will be able to pull that off. Just use the rock and not give him anything back. I don't believe that's going to happen, right? But Lynch is going to reaffirm what he's heard, there. That's insane. Like, right. It's such an abusive relationship mentality to come in well, and, like, Rod, I'll take you back. You can come, but no video games. Your boys, no hanging out with your friends on yeah. the weekend. You're going to do it all on my terms. That relationships never work like that, ever. Well, they should. It's it's ever. Is this a collaboration? Is it a partnership? Or are you picking the rocks brand contacts? We covered all this yesterday. Mm -hmm. But here's my thing: with all the people that are going just bonkers over losing the three down Canadian brand of football. I'm not just talking about the CFL, but Canadian football with the way we played up here in junior and university and high school. If you love the CFL that much and you're so welded to it, how many of you bought spots on the Grey Cup fan base? Just tell me, please. I tweeted that 90 minutes ago and people are just going mental about it. And they're like, I've got season tickets. I've got this. I, I couldn't afford it. We're in a pandemic. I'm like, I'll put you all down as no. Because when the chips are down and the CFL needed you, you weren't there. So don't talk to me about how much you love the fabric of Canada, the CFL. So great. Did you put your money where your mouth is? Tell me, please. Well, I was on CERB. I, 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 I have this. I do. I was, it's a no. So you don't love it as much as you say that you do. And, of course, people are writing me going, oh, right, you just care about your own brand. You just care about your own show. Yep. You finally got it. So if this is the CFL's way of maintaining its sustainability and growing, I'm all for it. But if you love the CFL that much and don't want to merge with another league, where were you when you had the chance to step up and save it? You weren't there. So the CFL has to do what's best for it, not what you people want. Thank you. Anything else on that? No. I see <laughs> it's coming up. People can't wait. And I know it's opening night in the Western Hockey League's Eastern Division here in the hub, right here in the sweatpants capital. Obviously, I'm wearing my jersey, my pullover for God's team, the Regina Pats. I'll be calling the game tonight. With him, Connor Bedard's debut, I'll be at the microphone for it in major junior hockey. I cannot believe how fortunate and grateful I am, and I know you feel the same way. I wish you had worn, you see what he's wearing, the Saskatoon Blades. They play tomorrow Yeah, against the Swift Crown Broncos. And that reminds me, I ran into a scout for the Broncos this morning, Dennis Ulmer. He was having a tough time. His brother, Dale, one year younger, passed away last night. Whew. So I ran into a hockey scout this morning, and he asked if I would mention his brother, and I did. I'm glad I actually thought about that in the Broncos. So condolences to the Ulmer family, and as he said, he goes, I think about you, your brothers, your mom and dad. You guys are great people. Same as the Ulmers. They're a hockey family. Yeah. And uh, where's your jacket? I know. I took it. It's so hot. It's actually not quite as bad today. I'll put it on for the overtime. I got to say, Ray in the six. A package came to the bunker here yesterday. I opened it up, and it was gear from the Kitchener Rangers. And I already got my bunny hug at home. I don't have it here anymore. I was going to wear it today for one segment, because if I'd worn it under these lights, I would have died of heat exhaustion. It's hockey gear. Yeah. 
right? And it's 800 million degrees in here. I called it morning skate gear. It's <laughs> That's perfect. right. For minus 40. Yeah, for being out in the morning skate. So his, he's got his jacket here, but it's from the Kitchener Rangers. It's hot, hot, hot. Mm. And we'll wear it on the show here for a segment. But I just want to say thanks to Ray and the Six and the Kitchener Rangers. They are now our official OHL team. So I'm getting out of order on my things here. Thursday NHL leftovers, what was meant to be my second point here in the quick six show topics. And incidentally, the warm up is brought to you by the Four Seasons Sports Palace, your home for the NHL, UFC, and Regina Pats hockey. Guaranteed to me by the owner, the Greek freak, that they will have the game on the video wall as the featured game tonight, Regina Pats, Prince Albert Raiders. If access is not your cable carrier and you want to watch the game, go on down to the Four Seasons and watch it tonight. There will be players' families there. I guarantee it because I talked to them. And also because they can't get into the ring. And also Famoso downtown, the pizzeria that I used to own. Yep. They'll have it too. You're welcome. So my NHL... Here's one for you goalies in the NHL that haven't figured it out yet. William Nylander is always going to go to the backhand. Always. It might help if you know that. You may still not be able to stop it, though. He beat Mike Smith from 30 feet out with a backhand a couple of weeks ago. Or oh, yeah. 10 days ago. Oh, yeah. Just saying, we willy-nilly. Uh, we willy-nilly. We willy Nylander will always go to the backhand when given the chance. Backchecking is a problem in Winnipeg. I tweeted that and didn't get any blowback from Winnipeg. So either they agree with me or they hate me. There was no reaction to that. I know. But the overtime goal last night, I'm like, is this slow-mo? I don't care if you guys were caught at the end of a line change. You shouldn't have been out there then. It, looks, it looked like a wreck game. I know. I know. And it wasn't just me then. No, it wasn't. It was, yeah, it was a slow play. I mean, that's what the good players do. They can really slow the game down, but still. Yeah, there was no back check there. They had, they had exhausted everything in the offensive zone, and they're like, yeah. Then get off the ice. Yeah. Uh, Ryan McCarthy is watching in Albany, New York. He says, more scoops than Raisin Bran. <laughs> and good Friday from upstate New York. I can't explain our appeal to the American viewing audience, yeah. but I like it. Josh Anderson, complete player. Yeah, he served as a punching bag for Luch last night in the Montreal-Calgary game, but at least he was there. He made it a fight. This guy can score and fight. I love guys like that. They still matter, apparently. Yeah. Calgary Flames look like they finally cared. And they won 2-1 over Montreal. And uh, I just wanted to point out Barry Trotz, 1,700 games in the NHL, former captain of God's team, the Regina Pats. Those are my NHL leftovers. Uh, we're into the Briar. What? We're into the Briar Championship round. And we'll be talking about that later. I got the draw in front of me. Gunlesson versus Epping. That's Manitoba, Ontario. Cooey versus Botcher. All on all Alberta matchup there. Oh, yeah. Howard versus Dunstone. Gushu versus Jacobs. These are the heavy hitters. Now we're into the ding, nitty-gritty. Ding, 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 ding. Let's go. LFG. Uh, WHL East opening night. I mentioned that. Point five. NFL notes. It's our poll question today. Man, things move fast in football. This was my poll question from an hour ago, and it was, will Deshaun Watson play for the Houston Texas this, Texans this season? For Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, 62 votes. 80, I just put it out. 87% runaway say no, he won't. What are they saying on Facebook? 71% say no, runaway. John Frenzy's got thoughts on that. Um, I, this isn't the first of its kind, right? This sort of stalemate. But I kind of have a feeling this is going to roll into camp. I mean, the Texans have literally said there's something wrong with that organization. Yeah, at its core. <laughs> at its right. core, there's something wrong with the organization. And like I say, every team, every fam, every team, every family has their issues and problems. They do. But when you can see them from another country away, <laughs> those are really big problems the Houston Texans have. And the GM or the coach, Culling, said uh, on a podcast, they, the only quarterback they have under contract is Deshaun Watson right now. Mm-hmm. Like, they cannot get rid of him. And then the other note, of course, is Cam Newton has signed a one-year deal with the New England Patriots. 
clearly they don't. The market is not strong for quarterbacks. <laughs> is all I can say about that. Yes, there's not a lot of clearly options available, and that's tough, right? You got to take care of yourself, and you know what? Yeah, I mean. Deshaun Watson, I know Don said that he's going to be a Texan in 21. He might be. Doesn't mean he's going to play any games. Because if he says he's not playing, trust me, he's got enough money in his bank account where he can say, I'm not playing for a year. And so it becomes who has the power or who has bigger stones, right? It becomes a game of chicken between the Texans and Deshaun Watson. It is a Flame Tech football Friday, and Clark has informed me the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have officially re-signed kicker Brett Lowther. So that's tremendous news. Lynch is applauding over there. My sixth point, and then we've got a bonus breaking news today. I almost forgot our top six, bottom, sorry, top five, bottom five in the National Hockey League every week. We usually do it Thursdays. Didn't get to it Thursday. Here we are on a Flame Tech Football Friday. Are you ready for my top five? Yeah. Number one, Tampa Bay. Number two, Carolina. Number three, Vegas Golden Knights. Number four, New York Islanders. And number five, the Florida Panthers. Your almighty Leafs have slid right out of the top five. <gasps> How dare you? Any argument on that? No. No. But, you know, we're starting to see. We, we thought the Toronto-Edmonton, you know, series was going to show you the cream of the crop in the north. Mm-hmm. The Toronto-Winnipeg is starting to do that a little bit more. Right. It's fun to watch. But, yeah, no, not, not top five right now. Bottom five in the National Hockey League. Apologies if it's hurting any of your feelings, because it's your team. The worst team in the NHL is Buffalo. The second worst is Detroit. The third worst is Ottawa. The fourth worst is the New Jersey Devils. And I forgot to write the fifth worst. New Jersey. But it wouldn't take a lot to figure that out. No. There's a few candidates. I, 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 was, I was dangling around the Vancouver Canucks. Clark just said the Anaheim Ducks, and let's put it in there. There you go. Your bottom five, Buffalo, Detroit, Ottawa, New Jersey, and Anaheim. So there's your top five, bottom five of the National Hockey League. I can't believe how much ground we're covering here today. Oh, tons. And breaking news from the Canadian Premier League, Canada's Premier Pro Soccer League. This is a news release from the CPL. They're pleased to announce they have awarded the exclusive rights to a CPL expansion club to Living Sky Sports and Entertainment, a Saskatchewan-based company. The launch of an expansion club is contingent upon LSSE delivering a soccer-specific stadium to league standards. And to that end, the ownership group has identified Prairie Land Park in Saskatoon as a preferred site for a stadium. That's the good news. That's the breaking news. Soccer fans and sports fans in this province are popping champagne corks today. Believe me, they are. Not anywhere in that news release did I see the global story that was sent to me that Prairie Land Park has officially announced the end of thoroughbred racing forever at Prairie Land Park. That came out today, too. That's in the fine print at the bottom of the news release. So my good friend Dave Paulus, Dave Paulson, the voice of Prairie Land Horse Racing, out of a job. All these people, out of a job. They're not racing horses this summer. They didn't race horses last summer. And I want to know what COVID has against the horse racing industry. That's so disappointing. It's such a great time to go to Prairie Land and, and go watch the horse right. racing on a Friday, Saturday night in the summer. Love doing that. And it is usually packed. So that, that part is really, really, really disappointing. But now you've got stands and stuff already built. You just put the get rid of the uh, the horse racing oval, and you got a soccer pitch. It'll be easy peasy lemon squeezy to put a very nice pro soccer stadium right in there, but it comes with the death of thoroughbred racing at Prairie Land Park, which has been a tradition for yeah for decades. Too bad. Uh, and one comment before we roll from Wayne Grolo in Victoria. Happy birthday, Wayne! By the way, he says, "Congrats, Brett Lowther." It's a crime that he's not playing in the National Football League, but we're happy that you've re-signed with Saskatchewan. The NFL's not going anywhere. Brett Lowther will be fine, and he'll be there before his career's over. We're going to Seattle next, and we're bringing in Hall of Fame Rough Riders broadcaster John Frenzy as well. This has been the warm-up. You're watching the RP Show, everybody, across the Game Plus TV network in all 10 provinces and 31 states, live daily on YouTube and Facebook, and 24-hour sports talk for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. 
you gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 4D simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. IKS Live, IKS Live, Western Canada's premier production services company, LED, LED sign rental, video, video production, event, event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website, IKS Live, always the best seat in the house, IKS Live. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. While the world seems to be facing one challenge after another, our focus at FlameTech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. It is. Welcome back, everybody. Flame Tech Football Friday. I just want to tell you that we do have the head coach of the Toronto Argonauts coming up, Ryan Dinwiddie. Are you bringing me the phone? Thank you. Premo text line is officially now open. The text line's officially now open. We got it off the charger. And Hall of Fame uh, Rough Riders broadcaster John Frenzy joining us here in a second with his thoughts on the CFL-XFL potential merger, and he's got scoops. But as I mentioned, I don't want to keep this guy waiting long. Ian Furness is a longtime buddy of mine, although I almost wonder if he remembers me or when we first met. But here's his Twitter, bu Twitter bio on the air weekdays, 1 to 3 p.m. on Sports Radio KJR. The big sports talk blowtorch in Seattle. And he moonlights on Q13 Fox Seahawks game day reporter. But the former voice of the Thunderbirds, that's where we first met. Ian, how are you, my friend? How you been the last 28 years? 
I, I was just thinking, Rod, it's been, as the kids would say, a minute, right? Since we uh, since we last spoke and uh, following you from afar, uh, I used to read the blog religiously and uh, and everything you've done, been through and accomplished. It's awesome to see you. Awesome to hear you. It's uh, cool to be on up in uh, one of my favorite places, Saskatchewan. Oh, I know. I know you love the hockey up here. And actually, before we jump into the NFL and Lynch is just Chomping at the bit to ask you NFL questions. I was just telling you the bet. story the other day. You and I walked around the Communiplex concourse and uh, back in the day, in 1993, and you saw those photos of Mike yeah. Medano and Dave Manson and Ken Baumgartner. You're like, oh, I'm in the hockey mecca. And I'm like, I, we are? I, I don't know. I grew up here. I, I, didn't re- <laughs> I didn't realize it was that big of a deal. You really enjoyed that Eastern swing with the T-Birds. I did. I, and I did T-Birds for two years. I did the Tri-City Americans for three years. So I did a five-year, as I call it, tour of duty in the Western Hockey League. But my mom was born in, in Moose Jaw. I uh, grew up in the prairies and then moved to Nelson, British Columbia when she was a teenager. So and my grandparents are from up there. My grandfather played in the, the Allen Cup back in the day. So, you know, for me, you know, as a kid in Seattle who has a great appreciation for the game and the history of the game, to go for the very first time to the prairies and, and to, you know, to go there. Back then, you know, we traveled – you know, the teams out West went to both the Alberta swing and the Saskatchewan Manitoba swing. We did that every year. We did two Eastern swings, which I think is, was awesome, especially for the kids and the parents, but yeah, to walk through the buildings there and to see the history. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't miss the crush can and moose jaw. I felt like every night that I went there that if something happened good for the team, I was broadcasting for there might be, you know, I might get beat up in the broadcast booth and wasn't a big fan of the smoke that was billowing up there. You know, non-smoking meant they hadn't smoked in 10 minutes. But uh, outside of that, it was just a, it was a great time of my life. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Uh, I, kn- I knew you loved it. And by the way, the crush can is a parking lot now, which it should be. There's a sports bar there, <laughs> but <laughs> the Boone Street barn in Spokane was no different. And then yeah. I I just, I just want to end it with the fact that when we went to Seattle in the Rock and Roll Arena, you gave me a tour oh, yeah. of that facility. You reciprocated, yep. and it was amazing. Is it still standing in the shadow with the Space Needle? No, it's sad, man. They turned it into some sort of a storage place or like a warm-up area for the symphony or something there. It's sad because square corners, high boards, uh, there's some great stories with guys. I, Ray, Ray Ferraro always tells the great stories because, you know, he's, what, five foot whatever, nothing. <laughs> you go in the corners there, and unless you're 6'2", you'd get your decapitated if you got hit. And Seattle always had a big team back then. Uh, I mean, it was uh, – I mean, the buildings, you know, have just gotten so much better out here. Showware Center in Kent and, and up in Everett with uh, their building with the silver tips. They're, I mean, they're state-of-the-art buildings like a lot of them around the league. But there's something about the character of the old buildings in the dub that, uh, that I kind of miss a little bit. That's why we loved it. Look, I'll come back around on yeah. the Kraken. But John Frenzy, okay. we got a yeah. football guy here. And he wants to talk sure. some NFL with you. And so, Frenzy, take it away. Okay, Ian, good to see you. Good to meet you. Uh, I've got nice a pretty good you. idea of uh, what, yeah, what the best trade would be for the Watson, okay? Trade Watson. For Watson, okay. Yeah. Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson, which Deshaun, one? Deshaun, John, Deshaun Watson to Seattle for Russell Wilson. Wow. And, a, and a couple of draft choices. <laughs> oh, what the hell? He's a young quarterback. Uh, and uh, yeah. and he, uh, Russell Wilson would be great for that horseman or situation in Houston, eh? I, well, I, I think, you know, if you're Seattle, that's the only deal that would seem to make sense. The problem is, is uh, Russell hasn't put Houston on his list of uh, teams that he would go to. He's got a no trade clause, so he can veto any trade. Uh, if that were the case, simplicity wise, it makes all the sense in the world. Seattle gets a franchise quarterback in return, but I, I don't think anybody wants to go to Houston. And that's the issue. And, you know, the bigger picture with Russell is I. I just don't see Seattle trading him at least this year. The the dead cap money, even if they got Watson back, the dead cap money is thirty nine million dollars. They they couldn't even afford Deshaun Watson right now. They'd have to cut half the rest of their roster. So it's a it's a tough situation all the way around. It Watson will be traded. It's a matter of to whom. Uh, I don't think Wilson will be moved. Although you know, never say never in sports, right, guys? Well, Ian, for sure, and I'm I'm wondering. That's why I wanted you on, and why I asked Clark. Let's line this up with Ian. You're in the heart of it. Can you cut through the BS, please, and tell me if he doesn't want to trade? Why is there a list of teams? Makes no sense to us looking uh, it, from the outside. It doesn't make sense to us, and I mean, I've I've been lucky enough to cover Russell since day one, since 2012, and and you know, none of us know athletes that well, but I've been around him enough and interviewed him enough one on one with with the job at, with Q13 with their TV partner. It's so out of character. I think that's the thing that, that surprises me. Everything that's going on right now is out of character for him. He, he is a player and an individual that has done everything in his career uh, based on his image, 
uh, and trying to make sure he painted this picture of, of this pristine image of who he is and everything he's done has been, quote, the right way. And this is just so wrong on every level. You know, he's turned fans against him. Obviously, there's an issue between him and the front office. I think part of it is an ego has gone, you know, out of control. He has the most difficult agent in the NFL to work with. Mark Rogers, there's no doubt about it, has been a problem for Seattle since day one. Mark Rogers has baseball clients and one NFL client. And that one NFL client is Russell Wilson. Now, they've been able to come up with two contracts, a second and third contract in the NFL with Wilson and Rodgers, but it's been difficult both times. The, the negotiations have been acrimonious at best. And I think this is a lot of this is agent-driven, but Russell still has the, the say at the end of the day. And, and Rod, I mean, he just – it's just out of character. It doesn't make sense. He played awful the last nine games of the year, the final eight regular season games and the, the playoff game. Russell played the worst football of his career. It almost feels like he's looking to blame someone other than himself for that poor play. How do, wow. he, and, uh, how do he and the head coach, Pete Carroll, get along? The, you know, it used to be they got along great. Uh, and that was, you know, Pete's is probably the best communicator in the NFL. I, I think it goes back to his days at USC with, with the Trojans. Um, this guy relates to everyone, whether you're young, old, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, it doesn't matter. Pete Carroll sees no color. He sees no gender. He sees no demographic in terms of age. He is really, he is that guy. He has been uh, remarkable in his career in that regard. And so for him to have an issue now with him, the only player he really ever had an issue with before, I think, was Richard Sherman. And I don't even know how bad that was. I mean, Sherman's just one of those guys, strong-willed, smart guy, Stanford. He just kind of he started tuning out from Pete's stuff, and and then he got hurt, and they moved on from him. And that was mostly a salary cap issue. Uh, the Russell Wilson Pete Carroll dynamic for for to be strained all of a sudden is is odd. One of the things that we see Russell Wilson, I think, wants to be things that maybe he's not. Uh, I think he wants to be you know Tom Brady. Well, there's one Tom Brady in the history of the NFL. He's not going to win. Russell's not going to win six more NFL uh, Super Bowl championships. Uh, he wants to be this you know, up in that same echelon of, of the great quarterbacks of all time. He's a Hall of Fame quarterback. He's just not a top five, maybe not even a top 10 quarterback of all time. He thinks if he can throw more volume, more, th you know, more throws volume wise, that maybe he can get there. Um, it's just, but it's just so out of character. I think all of us in Seattle, at least, are trying to wrap, wrap our arms around it. Guys that have covered the team and gov cover this team. Day you guys know, right? You know what it's like. You cover a team day to day. You have a lot better feel for what the, na than what the national guys have. I, I think the national narrative for Russell Wilson is a little bit off. I mean, they've, they, they kind of missed the boat a wee bit here. I think you can fix this. Uh, I don't think you have to trade him and I don't think they will trade him this year. Never say never, but it just, $39 million of dead cap money on a $180 million salary cap, a hard cap in the NFL. You just can't compete with that. <laughs> Not good math there. Uh, Joe Lozito no. is watching on Long Island. He says, please make Ian a regular guest. He's fantastic. So there you go, Ian. Some <laughs> Thanks, love Joe. from the East Coast. How's, yeah. Barzell doing out how's, how's Barzell doing out there on the Long Island, huh? How do you think he's doing? <laughs> Have you seen the highlights, which incidentally ESPN's uh, finally rolling NHL highlights every night? Let's yeah. go. Yes, and two of that. We got Huge. three minutes left. The Seattle Kraken. Okay. What's the buzz in the Emerald City? Uh, there's a lot. Uh, you know, when they first came up with the idea to, to rebuild, and I'm not sure if you ever went to the Coliseum, Rod, the old building, which oh, was yeah. next to the arena. Uh, you know, it, it held like 12,000. They renovated that 94. It was just a disaster from the start. They can't, this group comes in Oakview group, Todd Lywicki, Tim Lywicki. They decided to rebuild this building and say, we're going to bring the hockey team here. And they put season tickets on sale three years ago. They, they sold 30,000 uh, over the course of an hour. They sold 12,000 in 12 minutes. It was remarkable. And that was with a deposit. The buzz hasn't slowed down. They're excited. Thankfully, they're not starting till this fall. Originally, they were going to start in 2020, uh, but they're going to start this fall. There's a lot of buzz. Uh, we're excited. We do a daily. I mean, listen, you, you're probably not surprised to know that I do a daily hockey segment on my radio show in <laughs> Seattle, of all places. Um, but we, uh, we're we jacked. We're ready to go. And I think the proximity of the border helps us. And I think that there's a misperception around really hockey and even in our own city. There are a lot of hockey fans here, a lot of people from, you know, that have crossed the border. And a lot of, you know, a lot of us grew up watching CBC Hockey Night in Canada. That was our first cable television in Seattle. So there's a lot of buzz. We're excited. We just kind of have to sit back and wait and see. And thankfully, it looks like the entry draft will take place on time, too. Sounds yep. like it. We have our Kraken insider, the great Ian Furness <laughs> from KJR Seattle. Ian, man, it's been 
far too long, but thanks for obliging our been. request. And stay safe there, and uh, let's keep in touch, my man. Hey, Rod, you guys, anytime you want me on, uh, I'd love to do it. Uh, just you got my – now, unfortunately, you have all my contact information. I can't hide from you. So. That's right. <laughs> You're right. We got you. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Anytime. Anytime. Uh, Take care. All right. Ian Furness from KJR Seattle, one of the greatest sports talk stations in America. I'm telling you that. A guy that we go back a real long ways and obviously just a super dude. Uh, a sports update. Josh Levo scored twice for the Calgary Flames in a 2-1 win at home over the visiting Montreal Canadiens when Thursday night. Daryl Sutter coached the Flames to victory in his first game behind Calgary's bench after Jeff Ward was fired a week earlier. Montreal's record since Dominic Ducharme replaced Claude Zulian now 3-2-3. Three, three. Austin Matthews helped his Toronto Maple Leafs end a three-game losing skid. Matthews scored 59 seconds into OT as Toronto beat the Winnipeg Jets 4-3 at Scotiabank Arena. Tony Snell hit a three-pointer at the buzzer, and the Atlanta Hawks came back from a 15-point deficit to, in the final six minutes to beat the Raptors 121-120 in Tampa, Florida. And new Houston Texans coach David Culley reiterated that the team has no intention of trading to Sean Watson. Despite the star quarterback's request to be dealt, Cully was hired in January to replace Bill O'Brien. He was asked more than a half dozen times about Watson's future with the team yesterday. Every time he made it clear that he expects Watson to be Houston's quarterback this season. That's the poll question today. Will Deshaun Watson play for the Houston Texans? And 80% of you for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center say No. This sports update for Ballers Rec Room, Saskatchewan's newest entertainment destination. Visit them in the heart of the Duty Strip. By the way, they'll have the Pats game on tonight. Pats and Prince Albert Raiders, 8 p.m. Book your spot at Ballers Rec Room. And for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. But I only drink it on special occasions. Okay, to Frenzy next on the CFL XFL. That's what we all came here for today. It's a Flame Tech Football Friday you're watching on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live, and Listen Live. 24-hour sports talk at rodpeterson.com. Listen Live. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming at the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Bronco Plumbing and Heating proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade and Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. 
Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. I've been here since I was 10 years old and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event. Event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rod. Welcome back, everybody. I'm just doing a cute little Instagram uh, post here from our RP show story. Welcoming back to the Welcome Back Cotter theme, Brett Lowther signing with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on Friday morning. And listen, enough of me. John Frenzy's here. Floor is yours, Lynch. <laughs> On the CFL-XFL potential merger, collaboration, will we play this year? Go. Oh, I laugh myself, silly, because I went all through this with Barry Davies three years ago, 92 to 95, with the Americans. You got to watch them. Let's put it that way. You got to watch your wallet. If you go to a big dinner with a bunch of people there, there you better expect you're going to pay for it. Uh, because they won't have a conveniently won't have a wallet in this situation. So I don't know. Um, I was told yesterday when I got all the details, supposedly, that what's going on there is no thoughts about joining together and collaborating, bringing in one big league, uh, because uh, they're not going to play till 22, by the way, anyway. Uh, the, the, um, Dwayne, the Jones, Dwayne Johnson's not going to play till 22 anyway. Uh, so the only thing they want to do is talk with the other league about how to get young people into the game, into the parks, and secondly, and monsterly, I call it a monster, gambling. The NFL is making a fortune off gambling. The minor leagues should be able to get some of that wealth. Well, that makes a lot of sense, I guess, but that's all they're talking about. There's no thought at all about collaborating, getting together. Do you believe that? Nope. <laughs> Neither do I. Because I know what happened in... Back in 91, 92, it was all, we were all going crazy about the, uh, what the World Football League was called. For three years, first thing the Americans did was say they will not take Canadians on the roster. It had to be, they're going to have an all-American roster. A, a big advantage for them. Canadian League went along with it. And actually, it worked out pretty good. We did not get murdered in every game. Pretty close games. Had some real good football games, as a matter of fact. Particularly playoff games, uh... In 1994, in BC Play Stadium, uh, the the BC, you were there, the Grey Cup. I was there, and Baltimore beat BC. No, BC Lions beat Baltimore on a uh, last second field goal. Yeah, by our friend eh? Lou, Lou, Lou Pasaglia. Pasaglia. The next year, Baltimore beat the Calgary Stampeders right here in Saskatchewan, in Regina, and that was the final game of the league. They had so much so much trouble financing themselves in the states. Although they supposedly had owners with extremely deep pockets, didn't turn out that way, and it was over. <laughs> uh, Larry Smith came back in again. We reorganized. It went back to our old way of league, the, of, of league structure, which is in there until now. And I want it to stay that way because I know what can happen if we get in amalgamating. So I hope we get the message across to the people that are thinking about this and talking, no. Oh, it's nice just to hold hands. We're going to hold hands. That's all we're going to do. Talk about how to get the young people into the park 
and gambling. That's all. You don't believe this either. No, I don't believe it. One word answer. So how do you but feel other, about it? But there's people that do believe it. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, of, <laughs> they think we're dumb. What, what are you going to say? And if the CFL actually believes, the way my read on this, and please tell me if I'm completely wrong, is they want to use the rock. Pick his pocket for the CFL's gain, yeah. and the CFL really gets nothing out of it. And right. I'm like, I, I don't think you CFL board of governors are that naive. No, but I'd like to hope that you're not. But is there? But some, history would show maybe you are. Is there? Some and special- hang on, June Jones goes on Ottawa radio yesterday, and he coached the Houston Rough next last year, and he says this is going to end up in full on. Merger, four downs, and all the rest. So my question to you, Lynch, is when the inevitable happens, which we all expect, and if you don't think it's going to happen, I've got some oceanfront property in Arizona to sell you. (laughs) When it does happen, will you continue to support the Continental Football League, if that's what it is, in the Saskatchewan Rough Riders? Because I will. I think this is awesome. Only choice we have. Thank you. And actually, that World Football League back then was pretty good football. We had some very exciting games. We had a pretty good game here, in Reg- a pretty good team here in Regina. So it, it worked out pretty good, except it went broke. I don't know why it went broke. It did. Uh, we had a half-assed type of TV contract, partially in Canada, partially in the States, not much in the States, not much coverage down there. So it, it didn't do, and, and yearly, each yearly, two or three teams were backing, uh, were falling apart in the American portion, not in the CFL, except for when Kimball went up to the commissioner in Montreal and gave them a little letter saying, the LOS are folding in, a, in 1996. So we lost a team there. So it was quite an experience. Always something in the news, I'll tell you that. They always had something <laughs> going on. And that's what happened now. If Dwayne Johnson's involved, you can expect a lot going on. Well, I'll tell you this much, and you know this, Rod. He'll want a lot of control and influence. Exactly. No, but he's going to do it for free. Yeah. That's, listen, you guys, this is the one thing the CFL... I don't think really understands. And some specific teams. If it's a partnership, you actually have to give something away. Yep. Okay? Sponsorship might technically be another thing. Give us your money. See you later. Yep. It's kind of how it's gone yep. for years. And how's that worked out for you? Yep. So a relationship is mutually beneficial. Can you guys look up the definition and show the CFL people this? The Rock needs to get something out of this other than doing it out of the goodness of his heart. Uh, anyways... <laughs> Claude Taylor writes he's watching on YouTube he says Peterson call the president of the riders and ask him how much money the team has in the bank why don't you do that I don't think I want to know the answer to that question to be honest with you we have speculated in that yeah, I, I gave you months. the floor I need it back for a bit yeah. Jeff Kozak says boy guess the CFL has looked under every rock thanks Jeff <laughs> from Jack Fulton what I don't understand is why doesn't the CFL just tell us up front what's really going down? It's getting to the point where you can't even believe what they're saying. And by the way, nobody's going to use Dwayne Johnson. Nobody. Well, they seem to think that they will. Oh, and Claude says, regarding me calling the riders and asking how much money they have in the bank, he says, you know the answer. Yeah, I do know the answer. They don't have any money. They're broke. That's why we are where we are. John Kirby in Edmonton. Randy Ambrosi was on Three Down Nation podcast, and he said it's not going to be a merger. John in Edmonton, I believe that Randy Ambrosi fully believes that. Oh, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. He's not a liar. And he he won't be a liar. It'll be somebody else. Somebody else, not executive or two or three of them, who are big, wealthy businessmen, will get together with the commissioner and say, you know, thinking about it, I think it's a good idea. We think about it, share the cost, get the uh, network, network contract in the States. How about that? Both, both Canada and the States have the big games on. Wouldn't that be one for, wonderful for us? We all need the money, any source of money we've got to look at seriously. And that's true. They do have Why, well, no, but look, J-Rod's watching. Yeah. Jared Livingstone. Well, that's what you have to say. He says, I think the riders need Tom Shepard's lottery back. Well, guess what? They told Tom Shepard, no thanks. <laughs> Bye-bye, Tom. We, oh. don't, we don't want your million dollars a year that we don't have to lift our fingers for. Bye-bye, Tom. Beat it. <laughs> Tom could help. Decisions like that. Tom could help a lot. Have right? them where they are now, yeah. broke, begging for money, and thinking that they're going to pick the rock's pocket. It's absurd. 
but I actually think they believe they can do it. Anyways, we'll come back with viewer takeover, curling report, and more. We've got the head coach of the Argos coming up, Ryan Dinwiddie. It's a very spicy Flame Tech football Friday. Flame Tech is your industry leader in combustion services. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV, live daily on YouTube and Facebook, and 24-hour sports talk for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Our parents always taught us about the importance of quality of work and friendly service. And here at Suds Car Wash, we're a family-run business, so it's really important that our customers feel like family. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. Proudly serving Regina and surrounding area since 1978, we are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade-In Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say, and I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tea time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rentals. Video. Video production. Event, event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Yeah, now, go. back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back, everybody. I will get to the curling report, but it is a Flame Tech Football Friday. We got to keep rolling with that because it's hot. Viewership's up. And Frenzy's not done yet. I told you he's got more scoops than Baskin Robbins. More scoops than Ben and Jerry's. Lynch. You well, got one with regards to the CFL playing in 2021. Yeah. Well, I understand. I understand what I've been led to believe. The drop dead date for a decision, believe it or not, is May 1st. And you think, May 1st? 
Well, by May 1st, they're supposed to have a training camp of 100 guys here. They're going to have 100 guys at training camp, um, two weeks at training camp, and they're supposed to have been in Winnipeg on May the 28th for a game against the Bombers to open the season, exhibition game. So that's a lot of work to do in 28 days. So I hope something's done before that. Uh, and I don't know about the draft. Well, they didn't tell me about the draft yet, but they got to have that. They got to have that yet for sure. Hey, you headline tweeters, tweet it. Yeah. John Frenzy saying May 1st is the drop dead date for a 2021 CFL season. And just to delve deeper into this, when the XFL CFL story came out on Wednesday, Lynch wouldn't have seen it on Twitter because he's not on Twitter. But you saw Odell Willis saying, how about this year's camp? Can we hear about this year's camp? Matt Nichols, Ottawa's quarterback, tweeting, who do I need to ask when training camp starts? Do I need to ask The Rock? Oh. It, oh. Yeah, they all said that, Lynch. Oh, The well, Rock's a powerful guy. Of course a, he is. I'm afraid of him. He's got power, glory, and influence. He's smooth. He can turn you on. And this team, this league, needs financing. Needs a big television contract. He's got them all. Right? Yeah. Access to them all. You know what he has. Oh, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just sitting here thinking. But I'm absorbing. Everybody's absorbing what you just said. May 1st is the drop-dead date. I, the I, fact of the matter remains they may not play this year. 50-50, th- whether they do or not. But do you see where these current CFL players might be a little miffed? I guess. A little miffed. I'd be a little miffed. I hope nobody gets beaten up because of all of this. No way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's unbelievable. Um, I'm scared of what's going to happen. Can I say that? It's going to be an interesting six weeks, hey, the next six weeks. Very, very interesting. I hope things happen small. I hope the way things go. Uh, I know they're very, very optimistic in Saskatchewan, which is great. They signed some good new players, some good old, old overs. Great one today, the, the place kicker. Uh, yeah. Well, we're, in, we're in shape to have a real good football team. And I could say easily, we could be in first place. Let me read a couple of comments here. Uh, Craig Campbell in downtown Toronto says, people question why the CFL has no news about 2021. People question the CFL by speaking with the XFL. Randy Ambrosi can't win. He's slow and methodical with his long-range plan. All I'm saying is this is going to end up in a merger with all teams. And June Jones said as much in Ottawa radio yesterday. Don't take my word for it. June Jones has said it. And he works in the XFL. William May, one of our viewers, says, I've been reading a book called End Zone Border Wars. And it goes into detail about the CFL and the expansion into the States. Listen, I got a personally autographed copy of that book by the author, Ed Willis. Don't think this is the same thing. Because it's nowhere near the same thing. It's entirely different people in this league. It's entirely different businesses. And there was not the rock back then. But we'll carry that over into hour two in the second half kickoff. Curling report for Verge Agriculture. Wildcard 2's Kevin Cooey was the first team to book his championship pool ticket. And now Wildcard 3's Wayne Madaw was the next to make the eight-team cut at the Briar. The veteran skips were soon joined by Canada's Brad Gushu, Saskatchewan's Matt Dunstone, and Ontario's John Epping on the right side of the cut line. Alberta's Brendan Botcher, Northern Ontario's Brad Jacobs, and Manitoba's Jason Gunlison then locked down the other berths Thursday night. It is big boy curling time, folks. Coey's Alberta-based team beat Quebec's Michael Fournier to take top spot in Pool B at 7-1. Midas Ontario-based rink edged Manitoba 5-4 in the evening to lead Pool A at 7-1. The records will carry over into the championship pool. The next cut will come after the Saturday night draw at the Mark and McPhail Center when the top three teams advance to Sunday's playoffs. Pool B was rounded out by Canada, Saskatchewan, and Ontario, all with 6-2 records. Gushu, the defending champion from St. John's, Newfoundland, beat none of its Peter Mackey 9-2. Epping top PEI's Eddie McKenzie 8-4. And Dunstone held off Nova Scotia's Scott McDonald 7-5. In Pool A, Botcher moved into second place at 6-2 with a 7-5 evening win over BC's Stephen Laycock. Gunlesson and Jacobs, who dropped an 8-6 decision to Madon in the morning, took the last two spots at 5-3. So there you go. That's a curling report for Verge Agriculture. Helping farmers plan and optimize their operations across every field. Visit vergeag.com. 
To learn more today, try the software for free. We'll see you back for the second half kickoff after this break on Game Plus. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is Saskatchewan's only full-service supply chain company. Strategic sourcing, PO creation, and order expediting, VMI and vending solutions, and free delivery are just a few of the supply chain services we provide. If your company needs it, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions can get it for you. Price, quality, service, Rockstar Supply Chain Solution is helping Saskatchewan companies buy better. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. While the world seems to be facing one challenge after another, our focus at Flametech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 Ford F-150 Explorer or 2020 Ford Escape and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of thoroughly inspected pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. He's ready. He's joining us next from Steel Town. How about that? Sidney Crosby's trade availability. Is there any chance that Sidney doesn't finish his career in Pittsburgh? Not, not a chance. Not unless he doesn't want to. Not a chance. Like, I haven't talked to Hexie about it because we would never talk about that. I haven't even said to Hexie, should we talk about moving Sid? It would be unthinkable. So, no, unless that would only change if the player changed his mind. But, no. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It's what we call the second half kickoff. We're into hour two of your favorite sports talk show. We're North America wide across all 10 provinces in Canada and in 31 states in the United States. We're also on YouTube and Facebook Live and 24-hour sports talk at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Lots of great comments coming in. We just... What we do here in hour two now is we just roll the discussion over. And what we, well, in hour one, we had Ian Furness with us from Seattle, Sports Radio, KJR Seattle, one of the finest sports talk 
radio stations in America. But we talked NFL with him and Seattle Kraken and so forth. But the big topic here on a Flame Tech Football Friday is the NHL. Sorry, the CFL and XFL talking about a collaboration. We all believe it's going to end up in a merger, even though the CFL says, and I believe that they think that it won't. We all believe that it will. There was also really breaking news for the soccer fans and the Canadian sports fans. The Canadian Premier League, which is the top pro soccer league in the country. Now, separate from MLS, but it's a true Canadian soccer league. CFL of soccer, if you will, announcing expansion to Saskatchewan, and they're building a stadium at Prairie Land Park in Saskatoon. That's really big news, Lynch. Terrific. And I know you really love uh, Saskatoon because you went to university there. That's terrific. And the line of the day wasn't even on the air (laughs) when we were talking about The Rock, and you don't even remember what it was. His ex-wife, Danny Garcia, he and The Rock are partners in this Redbird capital. That's what the CFL has to deal with. And I said, wouldn't it be nice... If we all got along with our ex-wives the way those two get along, do you remember what you said? No, I don't. You said, it would be great to get along with my current wife like that. <laughs> Sorry about that, kids. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, he's got there a was weird, no swearing he's in He's got it. a weird partnership. You know that show he put on, that big thing he put on just a few uh, months ago. What about it? Well, it was a big extravaganza on television. Uh, and they said they have him credited being uh, the producer in control of it all. We got a couple of Stampeders fans wa- uh, watching, and I want to uh, say hey to all our friends in Calgary. It won't take long. Jack Fulton says, without getting real honest with themselves and the players, this league is imploding. Pride kills if not handled right. The truth will set you free. Right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. That's from Jack in Calgary, or close to Calgary. Meanwhile, Jeff, the Stan Peters fan, says, without, or says uh, June Jones says he believes a merger could happen. That is a far cry from him saying it will happen. It is just an opinion piece from a predominant coach who is an XFL employee. He says, I'll stick to my own instincts and common sense in believing this is all pie in the sky talk. I encourage you to believe whatever you want to believe. Jeff, a lot of people want to live in a world of, as my brother would say, rainbows and unicorn pee. (laughs) Rainbows and unicorn pee. (laughs) If you want to believe and you want to live in a fairy fantasy land, there's a lot of people that live in that land. A lot of CFL owners and governors live in that land of fantasy and not reality. Go join them. Believe whatever you want to believe. This, I'm with June Jones, who's a no BS, down to earth, black and white guy. Well, we believe this is ending. This is ending up in a merger. And I, John, you wanted to address this. Stevie Myers is watching on Facebook. He says, Rod, if the CFL XFL merger is to happen in 2022, what would be the point of a season in 2021 for the current CFL? And that is the, in a way, elephant in the room, or it's the question we haven't addressed yet in the past couple of days since this news came down. And believe me. That concept's dawned on me, too. It's a way out. Right. Well, Frenzy broke the news last hour that he believes the drop-dead date has been set for May 1st for a season this year in the Canadian Football League or not. So, yeah, that little voice in the back of my head said the same thing you just did, Stevie. Why play it all this year if you're just going to hook up in 2022? And And the reason would be, why wouldn't you? If we're at a point with vaccinations and we can get fans into the stadiums and we can have our coaches coach and our players play and our popcorn sellers sell popcorn and everybody gets back to work, why why wouldn't we? And you don't have to necessarily, why would we not? And you don't have to necessarily bill it as the last season because you don't know how this merger is necessarily going to work. You know, DuPont's all on the train, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this, Lynch, that if it does become the Continental Football League and it's still the CFL, could we still play for the Grey Cup? Right? Yeah, we can, certainly. Why, why, not? why not? Why not? It's a, one of the great cups in, in all of fo- all of sport. Been around for a long, long time. What a beautiful cup. It's a big honor to win that. We've had an American team win it with a... Uh, 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 in 1995, it was uh, the um, Baltimore Stallions won it, beating Calgary and right here, right, beautiful old Regina. 
So it can happen. I see uh, Jeff Stamps here has got the idea we need a new name if we go in that way. No, he's talking about the soccer team. Oh, is he? Oh. Okay. Mandy in Edmonton says, LOL, whatever. I don't believe there's any merger on the horizon either. She says, why would the CFL want to merge with a league with a failing history? Mandy, you actually, I treasure you because you're one of the 38% of our female viewers, but you're one of the 90% of naysayers to this whole idea. And incidentally, I was on a, new, a podcast in New York two nights ago, and they said the XFL, these were sports guys, they said the, in the, the XFL does not have a good brand in America because it has folded twice. And a lot of that has to do the second time with the pandemic, of course. But that's why they need to rebrand it with the Continental Football League. And actually, this guy, CFL Reddit, said it better than anybody. CFL on Reddit. I'd have to find it. So I, I don't want to paraphrase and get it wrong, but he basically said the CFL has 100 years of history and great football. I don't think I can find his tweet here in time. CFL has 100 years of great football history, but terrible marketing and business. The XFL has no history of great football, but wonderful marketing. That's true. And bit right. He goes, looks like a perfect match. <laughs> it's true. He wasn't being... He wasn't joking. He wasn't being facetious. No, that's true. Very true. Well, they got the big contracts. Well, and incidentally, so I talked to the XFL be, well, almost two years ago now. And I said, listen, I'm a free agent. I'm out there and available to call pro football. And they said, oh, Rod, we're aware. But our games are on ESPN, Fox, and uh, NBC or whatever. We're using the NFL announcers. Well, why wouldn't they? Sure. They weren't doing anything at the time. Yeah. So these are the Now, I'm not even sure those guys that were with the XFL at that time are still with the XFL. But what I'm saying is they had the big time TV contracts. Right. And they did have pretty good crowds of the games for the most part. Yes. It was the health, this wonderful health situation, the epidemic that's got all of us. It destroyed the league. A big factor in destroying the league this time around. It wasn't the management. It was the big, this, this health thing. From Tank Abbott, he says, just think of the talent level of the league. If they did merge with the XFL, it would be great. Jeff, the Stamps fan. Listen, Jeff, this is the last question I'm going to answer. We're not having a personal one-on-one -on -one here. He says, Rod, no one has illusions. The CFL barely hangs on some years. But why does it keep coming back year after year after year? Well, it's historically been a cockroach. Yes, you can't kill it. It's never faced a pandemic before. It's never the coronavirus will have taken down the CFL. And you don't listen. You can listen. I believe that Jeff is in that 80 to 85 percent of society that wants to believe what they're told. Very you obviously do. And you want to go by what the CFL is telling you and what the Stampeders are emailing you. You want to believe everything's going to be okay. It's not. If the CFL doesn't get money from somewhere, they're not playing this year. That's a fact. And they're going to die. No, we so you can say whatever you want to say about them coming back all the time and you can't kill them. They're dead. Yeah. Pat McAfee, clearly one of the most connected guys in football, on his show said what? CFL was awesome, but it's dead. It's dead. There's a little thing of denial here it's not with the river. people like Mandy not the river. and people like Jeff the Stamps fan. You don't want to believe what's right in front of your face. And I'm tired of telling you what's going on. You want to just believe what you hear, what's coming out of TSN and what's coming from your emails from the team. So go ahead and believe it. But don't question me because you're not going to change my mind because I know. Anyways, Frenzy, where are you? Well, I'm just saying that's where we're at. It's a way out for the league. I mean, if it's really close. Okay, can... stop. Colin in Ottawa says, wrong, Rod. No big television rights for the last version of the XFL. Hey, jerk, I watched it with my own eyes. I watched it yeah. on ESPN and NBC. What are, you, what are you arguing with me for? I watched it with my own eyes. Top-notch anyway, announcers, Anyway, sorry, too. go ahead. Top-notch announcers, too.
Matt Vasgersian was calling the game, so incidentally was hired yesterday as the voice of the Anaheim Angels. Matt Vasgersian. Yeah. And then, well, Kevin I, Johnson. What I'm saying is this. If it's close, it doesn't look like it's going to go. It's really tough. And May 1st, that, that, that decision day, a way out would be, hey, we'd be, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to go big, big, big. We're going to join with the XFL for a Super League in 22. It'll be worthwhile you're waiting for. And you Saskatchewan fans, you will have the Great Cup in Regina, whatever it will. The championship trophy will be in beautiful old Regina. Okay? Yes. Uh, that's a pitch they could make, isn't it? Yeah. And I think Dwayne Johnson knows what Regina is all about. He's been here. Uh, that, that much I don't know. And I don't know what that has to do with anything. But on the Prairie Mobile text line, it's open now. 306-840-8777. That's 840-8777. Prairie Mobile is your authorized SAS Tell Mobility dealer. Jim Wagner says, hello, RP Nation, on this fabulous Frenzy Football Friday. So looking forward to the Pats game tonight. Going to be nice having you back on the call, Roddy. At Dupes as your partner. Thanks for a great week of shows, crew, and good weekend to all. Boy, it's nice to hear from a guy like that. <laughs> from Bob in Grand Prairie, Alberta. Solve the problem. Call Danny and get the answer you all apparently need. She can give it. That's Danny Garcia. Can we work on that, Clark? Producer Clark? Why can she give it? Oh, he's already on it. He's on it. Of course he's on it. Ray in the Six writes in regarding the Kitchener Rangers gear that he sent Dupes and I. Uh, Dupes is going to wear his out here later on. I left mine at home. I already wore it last night when we went to Costco. It's very cozy. Fits me perfectly. Huh. It's very warm, however. Uh, he says, awesome, Rod. Just a small token from me in appreciation for what you and Darren do. Love the show. I hope you enjoy. I had a guy uh, text me yesterday, by the way, on this whole Rock XFL, CFL story and said a lot of people are lying right now. I'm not going to name names, and I'm sure as hell not going to tell you a who it was. A lot of people are lying uh, right Stop. Now. That's Ooh. all I'm going to say. So you all want to believe what you're hearing. And you know what? Good on you. I know to ask a few more questions. We'll be back with the head coach of the Toronto Argonauts, Ryan Dinwiddie. This is a Flame Tech Football Friday, and you're watching on Game Plus TV across all 10 provinces and 31 states, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports talk streaming. For Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. Proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade-In Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program, or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Our parents always taught us about the importance of quality of work and friendly service. And here at Suds Car Wash, we're a family-run business, so it's really important that our customers feel like family. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. 
Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming at the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tea time, family event or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Welcome back, everybody, to the RP Show. <laughs> okay, I just want to say, hey, Gary, you got you must have high-definition television out there in Winnipeg. He says, I believe is what I believe in what's on Rod's wristband. It says, one day at a time. It works, Lynch, especially dealing with these people. You know what I mean? They're driving me nuts today. How can he get that off your hand? How did he know that? I don't know. He's got high-definition TV, I guess. Must have. Anyways, we're talking about the XFL-CFL merger, and um, I don't know if we're going to go down that road with Ryan Dinwiddie, our good and longtime friend, the head coach of the Toronto Argonauts, joins us today from his home office, I understand. Dinner, happy Friday. How you doing, my man? I'm doing well, Rod. Thanks for having me on the show. It's been a while. It's been far too long, and I would have loved to have chatted with you as soon as you were hired by the Toronto Argonauts, but really nothing's changed since I mean you haven't been on the field yet so let me ask you how have you filled the time since that day that you signed that contract and had the splashy news conference yeah we stayed pretty busy um you know we have our scouting assignments as far as the CFL draft and some of the you know emails we might get from her for pinball to you know investigate some of these um NCAA players and we do that in the later afternoons and kind of the mornings we kind of work together and it's 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 familiar with these guys but it's still pretty new I mean Max Never been in this scheme. Jerry hasn't. Marcus hasn't. Fred hasn't. So we spend a lot of time offensively to make sure we're talking the same thing terminology-wise and making sure that it makes sense and we're putting our players in a good spot to be successful. And I know when called upon, you guys will be ready. But here's, here's the question for you that if I'd have been at that news conference, I would have loved to have asked. And maybe you got it. But it was, what do you say to the people that don't think you're ready to be a head coach in the Canadian Football League? Lay it on me, Ryan. I don't think you really can say much. You know, I think you just got to put out a product on there that, that people start, you know, believing in what you're doing and, and know you're doing the right things. Uh, definitely unproven. I mean, I haven't called a uh, game since 2014. Dave was doing that in Calgary, and I feel comfortable doing that. I mean, I've been preparing for it, but, you know, it's it's uh, it's unknown, and I get that. And But it doesn't scare me from being able to do the job and, and the, I guess, the – the skeptics out there that don't understand what we're doing in our building, that's great. Uh, we just got to do what we need to do. And, and if you don't do well, you know, you're going to get fired. That's just part of the business. <laughs> which is which is fine because you don't plan on getting fired. And I knew that would be your answer. And the people that say that's the kind of things that gets me out of bed every day. And I assume it is with you, too. John frenzy has got questions for you. But I just want to say this. You got a lot of Jones guys over there, which is awesome. And you mentioned calling plays. Stephen McAdoo's your offensive coordinator, correct? Or is he O-line coach? What, what's that split there? Yeah, so he's the O-line coach. I wanted to give, you know, Steve some love on here. Jarius is our coordinator. Um, I'll call it, but Jarius is going to spend a lot of time with those quarterbacks. So I thought that was kind of the way it should be laid out. Uh, but Mac's a great coordinator. Um, I thought he got, got the, you know, the boot in Saskatchewan. I don't think it was deserving. I thought he did a great job there. Got Cody um, to the next level, uh, being unproven and being an old line coach to be able to work with your quarterbacks. Like that says something. So he's always done a good job in our meetings and in the past game. And I mean, he's a coordinator. I feel like I got him and Jarius and Marcus is going to be the next one that's going to be a great coordinator. So I feel really comfortable about all those guys. And 
And then the work ethic, they're always there, man. I can call those guys at midnight. I can, any time of the day, they're ready to meet. We met today for three hours and went through protections and, and just make sure we're on the same page. And he did a great job as well today. Of course, they're, they're grinders. And I don't even think the Riders had a quarterbacks coach with Fajardo now that you mention it. So I, that would give Mac even more kudos for a Western West outstanding player season for Cody Fajardo. But anyways, I got more, but hall of fame rider broadcaster, John frenzy has got some for you. What do you got friends? Ryan, good to see you there. So what's the atmosphere you, like in Toronto with, a, with the guys that you brought in with some real good players, I think, and a pretty good organization. Are the fans getting excited about the team and they'll give it a shot anyway and you can come to the games. I think so. I think, you know, you look at Twitter, I, I leave that up to our media guys more so than me looking at it. I'm not much of a social media guy, but the, they, they seem excited about the potential that's there. And then the buzz is kind of created around the city. I think this across the board, you know, Canadian, the whole Canadian football league, right. in this whole country that we're going to have a great attendance once the season gets going and guys and gals miss football and it's going to be great. And I'm looking forward to it. I think that's absolutely the case, but you know, when he talks about, well, where are you? Are you in Calgary now? Or where are you at dinner? I'm in Toronto. I've been here since uh, January 3rd last year. We, My wife, we've been stuck here. Um, family hasn't got to come up and see the kid yet, but no, it's great. I, I enjoy Toronto. Um, we're building something special. Uh, we have our you know, limitations, but we feel like we can overcome those. Well, okay. So I should have known that you would be lock, stock, and barrel all in in Toronto. And I guess with your young family, I, I, I know you would be loving the family time, but I was talking to Natea J the other day and he said he wants an, a hard knocks video series done on the Argos training camp. I said, why would you want that? And you're not even there. And he goes, all the talent, how are they going to fit all these guys in? Good problems to have dinner. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, there's going to be some surprises. I think there might be a few rookies that are even unknown right now that might take some of these guys jobs that are, you know, highly known. And we'll see We have great CFL depth with experience and at the back end, especially receiver. Uh, and then we have these, you know, um, you know, defensive ends that are from the NFL and we have a receiver that's from the NFL. We'll see. I mean, uh, the more competition that you can have, I think that's not a bad problem. What a, there's no talk about your defense from anybody. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I kind of like that. You know, it helps Glenn a little bit as far as the pressure uh, taking off him being a first-year coordinator. But I think, you know, you look at our D-line, uh, what we did there, I think we're dramatically, uh, you know, better there. I mean, Charleston, uh, you know, now we got the um, the kid Shane Ray from the, the Broncos. We'll see what he has. And, and so there's going to be uh, great competition there. Uh, Cam Judge being a linebacker that could play DB, play linebacker. He could rush the passer. Uh, he does a lot of good things, so I I'm very impressed by what we did on the personnel side to improve our defense. What about the rest of the Eastern Conference? Uh, is it going to be strong, or I know it looks right now Hamilton the favorite, and they got the Great Cup there this year, so they're loading up. But how about yourselves in Montreal and uh, Ottawa? Ottawa. Yeah, I think you know Hamilton's kind of just re-signed their guys. That's really the only thing they needed to do. They added Siante Evans, who's a great player. Um, He'll help them. Um, I think Ottawa, you know, stays true to who they are. They're going to be a, a darn good football team. But I think Montreal, you know, was pretty aggressive and free agency. Did a great job of improving their defense. So I have to spend a little bit more time on, you know, worrying about handle uh, Sewell and some of those other things. And, you know, that's part of it. Everybody's going to reload every year. But we feel comfortable where we're at. We feel other teams got better as well. And there's going to be a lot of competition on the, uh, the Eastern Conference uh, compared to, you know, previous years. Well, you know what? I thought it was, frankly, and I'm sorry to say, a one-horse race with Hamilton going into free agency and now coming out. I think it's a three-horse race, and Ottawa's not part of that deal. That's how we've got to figure it out, right, Frenzy? Right on. That's yep. what we think, yep. and, and you guys will decide when you get onto the field. But i got to go back to this. Lynch said in the break here, he goes like, do you think Merv's driving pinball nuts? I said, I bet you Merv's driving everybody nuts. <laughs> at, you know, but at least he's down in New You know, you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. That's How much? The one thing about Merv. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. No, the one thing you preach about Merv, you know, he'll talk your ear off and, you know, you almost want to get off the phone. You're on there for an hour and a half, but you appreciate his work ethic and, you know, the information that he gets from agents and, and how much time he spends, you know, researching these kids and, uh, no, I, I appreciate that. I, when I first took the job, I said, I know one thing, Merck's going to have enough talent for me to win. 
and uh, that was key for me. So he was a big part of the uh, me joining on here and uh, becoming a part of the Argonaut family as well as pinball as well. But those guys work really well together, you know. Uh, but yeah, you, you know, he's a little bit long winded sometimes. Well, that's we joke because we love him. And you can see why him and Jones got along because they're grinders too, man. It's just, man, he can talk. As Jones says, press play for Murph's nickname. But how much – he had to have a huge hand in getting you in there. I mean, did you have a history with pinball before you were hired as head coach of the Toronto Argonauts? No, never. I've never uh, had any discussions with him. And Murph kind of got the ball rolling and, and kind of told me their direction, their vision. Um, and then so – I wasn't, you know, very comfortable with the situation from years past and then talking with those two guys and it, it would just made so much sense. And the fact that they believed in me and they knew, you know, we're going to have some, you know, growing pains. I got to learn and I got to get better. And, and that comes with experience and I get all that, but just for them to say, Hey, I want to grow with this young kid. I believe in you. Let's do this. And, um, I was on board hundred percent, just the fact that they believe in me and we will work together, you know, all free and we'll be fluid. And, uh, you know, we might not have agreements all the time, but we're going to treat each other like men with respect and make sure we do what's best for the organization, not our own opinions. Of course. And uh, I think it's an outstanding Troika. Say some fun questions from the viewers here. Colin in Ottawa wants to know how happy you are to get your hands on Nick Arbuckle again. That kind of fell into your favor quite well. Yeah, it worked out. You know, last year it was kind of different, and we approached free agency a little bit differently with Nick, and, you know, Ottawa made the trade for him, but I believe in Nick a, a ton, and, and I always tell everybody, like, the one time where it sold me was when we went to Sask and dealt with all the crowd noise, and he played well and just kind of proved himself to me. I know I can count on him. You know, week in, week out, he'll be uh, dialed in, and hey, does he need to improve? Absolutely, we all do, um, but I think, you know, just the leadership that he'll bring to the table, the understanding of the offense – um, it's going to help us out tremendously. I thought we had you that day. You guys had other ideas. And, uh, and lastly, from somebody's the quiet card, they call themselves on YouTube. How about your salary cap? Have you heard the noise dinner? You said you're not a social media guy. Have you seen the criticism of the Argos spending here in free agency? Well, I mean, you just look at the article that came out as far as the quarterback salaries from last week. That should tell you a ton where Nick's, you know, at eighth or ninth getting paid. And that allows us to spend some money other places. But I don't think we're nowhere near as, as much as uh, other teams and uh, what the media portrays. Yeah, we have a lot of good football players in here. But a lot of these guys from the States are on, you know, rookie contracts. We have to pay our veteran CFL players what they deserve. Absolutely. But we're not going overboard just throwing money around to these guys. Uh Everybody's getting what they're worth, but we're making sure it works uh, under the guidelines that we expect to be successful from this year and then moving forward. Well, you're one of nine teams that can't wait to go out onto the field and prove it. So I'll say all the best, Ryan. I think it's I can't wait to see what's going on in Toronto. They've become my team because of the personnel you got there. And uh, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Good luck. No, Rod, thanks for having me on. And then I got to give out a, sh a shout out to Larry Mueller, who I call the mayor of Regina there at Auto oh. Extreme. He's, he's, he's the man. I call him the mayor of Regina. So just so everybody knows. You should have put the camera, put the camera on Lynch on that one. Oh boy. Yeah. Larry Mueller. He is something else. The czar. Yeah, right. Bazaar. That's the word. Bazaar. The, the czar. Yeah. All right. Bazaar. Thanks, dinner. <laughs> there you oh, go, yes, Ryan. You, have you too. The, uh, the father <laughs> of Mark Mueller. Mark. For years, he was the son-in-law of Ron Lancaster. That's how we knew Larry Mueller. And then yeah. it yeah. just went to the father of Mark Mueller. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but that's we'll break and come back with a sports update. Viewer takeover. And a reminder, we're leaving you early today here on Game Plus TV for live coverage of Swiss League Hockey. We'll be right back. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV, live daily on YouTube and Facebook, and 24-hour sports talk for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed.
There's something for everyone at the Mad Greek Eatery. Delicious Greek dishes, pizza, lasagna, pastas, soups, salads, and much more. The Mad Greek Eatery brings the best authentic Greek cuisine right to you. Available for licensed dining, events, delivery, and takeout. For the best taste and huge portions, there is only one place. Visit the Mad Greek Eatery, downtown Moose Jaw. Call for takeout and delivery today. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Direct West provides us with stats and analytics, and, and it's amazing for us to look and see that, you know, each year we're 10 to 20 percent higher on our Google Leads. It's great to see the success that our, our locations are having. The Direct West app gives us an opportunity to be in one place for people to find uh, any of our locations or our commodities. Without Direct West, we would have to be in multiple digital places. I would recommend Direct West. They're great to work with. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. I've been here since I was 10 years old and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event, event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. back and kicking it let's head back to the studio here's Rod just ahead of uh, sports update I got a couple comments and stories I want to tell Mike Hogan's watching the voice of the Argos he says on the Toronto Argos they've become my team because of the personnel you got there quote Rod Peterson welcome to the family Rod can I get an on-air Argos! Well, of course, Hoagie! And I noticed that I'm wearing blue almost every day. Yeah. So with my blue sweatpants that go with my Pat's top, I would uh, love to wear some Argos gear. And it matches quite well with XFL as well. And then speaking of all that, we got a text here from that Blue Jays first base coach for five seasons, Tim Leeper. And he just sent us a photo of his TV in his living room. He's like, you guys are on TV out here. Muskoka, Ontario. That's not as unbelievable as this. You'll like this. Okay. Actually, can you put the camera on Moose for a second? Oh, uh, one shot, sorry. Can you oh. show them? Go the other way. That's the jacket from Ray and the Six. Isn't that nice? Cooch Kitchener Rangers. He got his gear. Yeah. I got my gear. And it's warm AF. Oh. 
So, <laughs> so anyway, you're, it's so gorgeous. It's nice, eh? Hey? Yeah. Very nice. I love it. Red, white, and blue, very Ooh. hard to beat. Yeah, very nice. So we're having a big Ontario day today. But we'll never forget that we're emanating from the bunker out here in Western Canada. But anyways, I was leaving my house today, and my neighbor, who's across the, uh, the street, he's out having a smoke, Darren, and he says this, Today! Okay. Hey, you got a new show! <sighs> yeah? I've had it for like a year and a half. He goes, what? I said, what's your cable carrier? He said, it's Access TV. I saw your show on the weekend. <sighs> you call him Dark Guy. Yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 we've been doing, no, no. My car on the side of it says Rod Peterson show Game Plus in the back window. What have you been looking at for the last year and a half? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just like, the, the, you got to go up and grab people by the lapels and shake them and say, we're on national television, all 10 provinces and 31 states every day. What's it going to take? I had to talk to a guy from the CFL the other day, frankly, who said, and he's right, social media doesn't cover it all. You need some big bucks. I was telling you that as soon as I got off the phone with him. Yep. We don't have big bucks, right? We just got a solid prod product, content, and <laughs> a wing and a prayer. We got what we need. I'd like to have big bucks, too. <laughs> I know. Maybe The Rock will sponsor us. I smell a merger. <laughs> With who? Oh, John Kirby in Edmonton says, what's the future fee What's the future of the RP show? Any merger in the future? Uh, well, he's the guy to talk to about that. Yeah, there's quite a few, but I know you I don't want to say. I smell a poll question. The Rock would be more successful to merge with? The CFL, the Rod Peterson show. Right. Ooh. Hot. Tank Abbott's watching, and he says, Rod, you need to get your name out there. Ha ha. I'm trying. You know, with all these podcasts, Albany, New York, St. Louis, Missouri, Los Angeles, Long Island. I'm doing as much as I can. From Patrolman Pete. In Winnipeg, Argos are getting receivers coach Marcus Howell a lot of new material to work with. Which acquisition is Coach Dinwiddie looking to make the biggest impact this season? Eric Rogers or someone else? Think about that for a second. Eric Rogers, Martavis Bryant, Juwan Breskison, mm -hmm. Dejan Brissett. Let's not forget about him. Oh, yeah. Hoagie says, you the man. Argo gear available at Argonauts.ca. You're going to make me pay for it. It's free advertising. The Kitchener Rangers aren't as cheap as those guys. <laughs> I remember this, though, the day that the Riders traded Sean Lemon to the Argos. He literally walked across the hall. The Argos were in town. Do you remember that? Yeah. So it was easy, and he was playing two days later for the Argos, and they put him in this Argos T-shirt, that dry fit. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I love your gear so much. The color scheme. Oh, <laughs> I know. Yeah. All of and it. it was the team that we were playing. It was our opposition. Yeah. It's hard to beat double blue, and you know that because you're a Titans fan. Yeah. Anyways, we'll see you on Monday here on Game Plus, everybody. It'll be 10 a.m. Sask time. Yes. 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern. Nobody else has to change their clocks. Uh, no, not at all. Until then, enjoy Swiss League hockey. You want me to go get that? <laughs> You are? Are you looking at the TV in the control room? Yep. Okay. They've gone to hockey there, and we're still live digitally here on YouTube and Facebook and rodpeterson.com. Listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash, and now we can settle all in. We can drop F-bombs now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> Why start now? Uh, it's funny. Ivan Diablo, he's an Argos fan. He watches every day. Welcome aboard, Ivan. This is the first he showed up today. Are we good? Ivan says, why didn't they sign Darrell Walker? We just listed all the receivers they have. You notice how the human condition is that they would rather complain about what they don't have? Always. 
I'm not just talking sports no, no, fans. Just in life. Everything. I know. It's, it's crazy. They spent their money elsewhere. They made a decision. They have a budget. They allocated their salary cap and maybe a little more. <laughs> Jeff in Winnipeg writes in and says, Rod, you need that pen for later to throw again. <laughs> <laughs> guys are liking that. Interesting story about these pens. 3,000 of them I ordered. I wish they could show the close-up of it. It's rodpeterson.com in ESPN font. TSN font. 3,000 pens. And then I got a letter from ESPN <laughs> saying, Rod, you need to, uh, you're done. And I was, that was on the header of rodpeterson.com. Yeah, you remember. remember that. I remember. For a brief time. And I emailed them back and I said, you can't trademark a font. GFY. <laughs> they wrote me back. Yes, we can. GFY. Why? Now I got three. You want a pen? <laughs> I, I just snorted. It's Friday afternoon, y'all. I'm still trying to figure out what the second Y is. <laughs> Yourself, yourself. I know. Yourself, well. yourself. <laughs> That's good. You get it? Yeah, I do. Um, so the bunk. You're a coffee cup. Yeah. It's one of those. Yeah, it's just Mike, Mike Blackbird in Toronto says, uh, yeah, they can. <laughs> That's what I found out. Yeah, you can trademark a font. I didn't know that. ESPN told me that. But if you really want to get down to it, the UFC uses the same font. The UFC does. Yeah. Google it. Obviously, they got prior written permission from ESPN. I did not. Uh, Patrolman Pete in Winnipeg says, ha, 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 love it. Which part? <laughs> the pens? Larry Dye in Medicine Hat says, I love that the show will start at 11 in Alberta. No. No change for Albertans. Only, the only change is for Saskatchewan people. Exactly. And Arizona? And Arizona, yeah. yeah. The two places where the world revolves around. Arizona and Saskatchewan. Yes. Oh, I've really screwed this up now. Pat Janix, watching in Saskatoon, says, uh, on Monday it'll be 9 a.m. B.C. time, 10 a.m. Mountain time, 11 a.m. Manitoba time, 12 noon Eastern. He's got it. Yeah, you got it, Pat. But that's not changed for anybody. Nobody's <laughs> Only time Saskatchewan, changes. Saskatchewan, 10 o'clock, Monday. Only Saskatchewan. Patrolman Pete in Winnipeg says, The Pens, what did you do with them all? We have a guy here. He's an intern. He's named Alan. The Asian sensation. He comes out with a grain shovel like those NHL ice guys, and he shovels them up at the end of the month. And puts them in a five-gallon pail. He and does. then we auction them off for charity. What a great idea. <laughs> like, I mean, here's the thing. You real? You, yeah. you just sorry, you yeah. say that, and that's going to end up on our Instagram feed one day. You bring the grain <laughs> shovel. Can somebody superimpose Alan the Asian sensation's head onto an ice scraper in the NHL? Preferably a female. Just for fun. It would be Alan in a kilt. We have a Nelson. We have a guy to do that now. Yeah. From Joe Lazito. Watching on Long Island, he says, besides aesthetics, is there a reason we're no longer treated to the frenzy walk-off? He doesn't really like that being shown. And out of respect for the man, we don't anymore. If he wants it, he gets it. Yeah. Right? If he wants it, he'll get up and leave. Hey, it's Friday. We're in one now, okay? Just a fun viewer takeover. Like Tank Abbott says, when are you going to get tank-sized shirts? Let's talk to the inventory guru over here. I've said many times when people ask you for something, for your product, you need to get it to them. Where are we on inventory? Let's see. We can look it up at rodpetersonshop.com. Well, he wouldn't be asking if it was available now. Unless, he, unless we're sold out. Because we should, have, we should have triples. We should have quadruple XL. They're all in there now? In the store. Should be, unless they're sold out. <laughs> Mark Zosel 
watching in Melfort, where they do the Melfort shuffle. He says, get that on camera, grain shoveling the pens up. We could do all these things, and we've hired this new content provider, Nelson. Where's his content? Hasn't he been on since Monday? <laughs> Lot to do. I'm very hard on people around here, and sometimes I know it doesn't go over well. You're looking it up at rodpetersonshop.com? There's, it's tri there. There's triples. What's, how big do you need? I don't tank? know how big is tank, which is fine. If we need tri quads, we'll get quads. He says, I need one XL only. One XL. That's not a tank. I would order a double just in case. Joe Lazito says, understood. Legends should get what they want. And Lynch does. Brandon Crow texting me, the voice of the Brandon Wheat Kings. He says, I found the Italian star deli. What a game day sandwich. Ha ha, this city knows how to eat. Good luck tonight, boys. Same to you, Crozy. We'll see him in the bubble, or maybe we won't see him in the bubble. We will. We will see. He's not in the hubble. He's the, the voice of the team, and the team's here, and the broadcasters aren't in. He's not, no. He is separate. He's, uh, there's some that are going to be in the hub and some that aren't. We won't see the ones that are in the hub. We should see the ones that aren't. We're going to find out a lot today. I, uh, to you people, CFL fans, I think that you are in a need-to-know basis scenario right now with the CFL-XFL, and here's why I say that. Okay. I told you that I ran into a hockey scout this morning, and I mentioned him, Dennis Ulmer, who had mentioned that his uh, – the brother had passed away last night, and Dennis was having a tough time this morning. And, and I passed along our condolences to the Almers. And he, well, by the way, Dennis's son Trent was the, uh, or Jeff Almer was the skills coach for the Arizona Coyotes up until this season. But he said that he has been in watching practices with the Broncos. And he said how, oh, we got our own spot. And it's, the, what did he say? Private spot, obviously, and WHL scouts a million miles away from the players and everybody else, right? So yeah. I guess the scouts, we're all on a need-to-know basis situation. No kidding. <laughs> right. So let's put it this way. When the scouts, i.e., er, my dad's buddies, call me and say, are we getting into the bubble? I can honestly say, I have no idea, guys, because until Wednesday I had no idea if I was getting in. Right. So they're dealing with every segment of sports differently. Scouts, here's your emails. Media, here's your emails. Trainers, here's your emails. And right. then it's Rod and Darren. <laughs> right, and then we're at the bottom of the list, which I'm used to, and that's fine. Oh, we got to take a break? Okay. Full-on viewer takeover, whatever you want to talk about, folks. Let's have a fun end of the week here. And we'll be right back. You're watching the RP Show on YouTube and Facebook Live and 24-hour sports talk streaming for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. 
Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Hey Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 Ford F-150 Explorer or 2020 Ford Escape and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of thoroughly inspected pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. You got something to say? You want to add to this show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rob. Ooh. Ooh. It is full-on viewer takeover. Like I said, Conrad Salipa, who I think is in Winnipeg, is watching. He says, I need to hear the director of scouting's view on the XFL-CFL idea. How about that? Clark was just telling us some of the names of guests next week, and they include Bruce Boudreau, Kevin Bieksa, Ron Dugay. Hopefully we can add Craig Smith to the list on maybe, maybe it waits till Friday. I don't think this story is going to be uh, cold by then. I don't. The Graham Reaper from Music City. That'll be good. Uh, so there's a time change this weekend I want to uh, point out. Yeah. From the 780, it's signed anonymous, but I think it's John Kirby trying to fool me. He signed it anonymous, Clark. He says, on Monday, what time does the show air in Alberta since we are moving our clocks forward on Sunday? Signed anonymous. Doesn't that sound like something John Kirby would say from Edmonton? We have you saved in the contacts, John. <laughs> I didn't save him in the oh. contacts. I think uh, so from the anonymous. It, nothing changes for Alberta. Or every, anywhere else on the planet. We're on at noon Eastern every day. Yeah. Period. End of story. No matter what province you live in, we're on at noon Eastern, and that never changes. Um, from P Patrolman Pete, he says, a couple WHL East questions. Number one, will the teams get through the schedule without being derailed by COVID? And two, can anyone stop Prince Albert? Yes and yes. That was easy. Mm-hmm. From Mike Blackbird, he says, I feel the people against the CFL-XFL merger is showing how old the fan base really is in the league. I don't know what to say about that, other than I agree. But I, it's been a long week. I don't feel like fighting with anybody anymore. Do you, you see what he's saying there, right? Yeah. Like the paraphrase on that is the people against it are the... The old people that don't want to change. Yeah. They liked what they like, and that's what they grew up with, and you're romantic about that. I don't blame you. I'm romantic about the CFL that I fell in love with, too. I don't want that to change, right? But I'm also, you need to be open to growth and to new things coming, and that's what we're talking about. It couldn't sustain itself. No. When are you going to get it through your head? Yeah. 
From my dad complaining that gas isn't 49 cents a liter anymore. (laughs) It's the same thing. exactly the same thing. I wish it was, too. Metal Shingle Guy writes in. He says, the XFL played five weeks. 70 guys got a shot at the NFL because of it. Players got to love it. CXFL, four down feeder system. I think we have to amalgamate. And you, know, you mentioned Odell Willis upset, saying he wants to know when training camp starts. I think if you're a veteran, I said this on the New York podcast the other night, if you're a veteran in the CFL, you're not for this necessarily because you got to start all over again, especially at a, like a, a 9, 10 plus year veteran. You're always looking your, over your shoulder in the CFL, but That's right. those guys would probably not like this to change either. No. An Odell Willis type guy. That's right. But I'll say it again, like I said on Twitter this morning that a lot of people didn't like. If you're really ready to just lay down and fall on your sword to save CFL three down football, large field, the Rouge, did you put your name on the Grey Cup? fan base did you pay 395 per person or whatever it was no no oh you didn't because i i got my season tickets i couldn't afford it i was on serve i did this i i I said i'll put you down then as a no so when push came to shove and this league needed you you didn't write that extra check i already give it up i gave it the office you're not willing to do anything possible anything and everything to save three down football, because that's what it's going to take. And maybe you donated to your local hospital's foundation lottery. Maybe you you know, per- per- participated in some 50-50 lottery. Maybe you donated to Tell a Miracle. That's great. But three down Canadian football hasn't been a priority to the vast majority of Canadians, and that's why they are in a position where they got to partner with the XFL. Over to you, Darren. It's true. It's true. And, you know, it's not a bad thing. Like, it doesn't necessarily mean that our game needs to change. And that's what I want. And what I really, really, truly believe is that the Canadian Football League sticks around. And it's owned and operated by Dwayne and Danny. Right? They run the business model. They handle the marketing. They take this league into a new era. And we're able to sustain the Grey Cup and the traditions of the CFL and the rules and the uniqueness of the game. And, yeah, we can innovate. The new kickoff rules are pretty interesting in the XFL. I like those. Those are neat. There's some different things we can add to the game. And it'll just increase the credibility because we know Canadian football has good credibility in football. Sure. A good brand. A good it's brand in football. Never said it didn't. Now time to give it a good brand. Mandy in, in Edmonton says, good luck with your furniture arrival today. Have a great weekend, all. Well, if I played my cards right, the furniture's already there since I've been on the air and I don't have to touch a blinking thing. I paid for it. You think that's that how it works? It. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nelson Hackowitz says, you know for a fact I put my name on that base, and guess what? We haven't heard anything about that either. Well, you didn't put your name on until I encouraged you to on behalf of the CFL. You're welcome, CFL. But uh, there's an avalanche of people writing me that did put their name on the fan base and haven't heard a bloody word about it from the Canadian Football League. So I don't really care if the CFL or whoever, whoever it is that watches this show and takes issue with what we say. They are in this mess because of their own doing. You got a communication problem. You tried to trick people by saying you're collaborating with the XFL when, in fact, you're collaborating with Redbird. And we're sitting here saying the way that it is. But we got hockey to do tonight. Somebody said, do I think Connor Bedard will leave the Pats in scoring? Ooh. Tune maybe. in tonight on Access to watch. Yeah, maybe. How about that? We'll talk about that. How about that? How about that? That'll be interesting. So, John, Kirby, go have a nap. Done with you. No, he's good. Thank you, John Kirby, for all you do. You're the best. We'll see you, John, at what? 10 a.m. Alberta time. 10 a.m. Alberta. How about that? Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. See you Monday here on Game Plus. I'm not this renegade rogue tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist. I'm just telling you what's actually going on.